if you feel that your employer was negligent in any way, 1% even, uh, then you have the possibility to uh, basically sue them. You can sue your employer for damages. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching this episode of Ask the Lawyers. I'm Leslie Rohde. Today, we're talking about what to do after a work-related injury. It happens sometimes, and we're thankful to have attorney Will Prevett with us from Herman & Herman in South Texas, the offices of that firm in San Antonio, Corpus Christi, McAllen, and Brownsville. Welcome, Will. Hey there, Leslie. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start with some vocabulary, because this might be um, difficult for some folks to understand, but if they're in the middle of something like this, they need to understand. We understand workers' comp, but then there's this term non-subscriber in Texas. Can you tell us what that means? Certainly, Leslie. So the terms, they're, they're related. They go hand in hand. Um, workers' compensation uh, in Texas, just like other states, is basically an insurance program managed by the state to help employees when they've been injured on the job uh, throughout the course and scope of their employment. Um, in Texas, uh, it's one of the trickier states in the sense that they do allow private sector employers to opt out of workers' compensation coverage. When they opt out, uh, they're deemed what, what you said as a non-subscriber. And so it's pretty simple. In Texas, if you if you are in the workers' compensation program, uh, then you are a subscriber. And if not, then you're a non-subscriber. That makes sense. And tell us more of what you know about what happens here in Texas with these companies and being allowed to be non-subscribers. You know, it's, it's written into law. Uh, and for over 100 years, private employers have had the option to choose uh, whether to opt into the program or to opt out. Um, from what I've gathered, uh, it looks like there's a number of reasons why a company may choose or choose not to be uh, part of the workers' compensation program. Um, for example, there are some larger companies that we've worked with and, and, and dealt with in the past, uh, like I believe HEB and Walmart. Those two are non-subscribers. And you know, the reason they, they don't subscribe is I feel they're, they're big enough uh, they can afford to be self-insured. They cover the claims internally uh, without without having to subscribe to workers' compensation. Um, in Texas, I would say the, the last study was roughly 33% of employers opt out or are non-subscribers uh, in Texas. That's a third. Wow. Good to know. I guess that's something you need to ask if you are related, if you are involved in a work accident uh, on the job there. Is this being a non-subscriber with a third of the companies about in Texas, is this a positive or a negative thing in your view as a lawyer for people? Well, you know, it, it, it kind of depends um, because, you know, like for example, with Walmart, you know, they have, they have the programs in place to get you the help you needed to get you um, lost wages if you're missing work. Um, but also, if there's some negligence on the part of the employer, you can essentially uh, sue your employer for your damages if they are not a subscriber to workers' compensation. So I don't know whether it's a good or a bad thing, but you, you are offered a few more avenues of recovery if they're not subscribing to workers' compensation. Um, in Texas, and I'm sure it's similar in other states, uh, when an employer is subscribing to workers' compensation, they are afforded certain protections. Uh, for example, it's it's almost impossible. There's very few scenarios where you can sue your employer if your employer is subscribing to workers' compensation. Whereas if they're a non-subscriber, um, you have to show 1% negligence on the part of the employer, uh, That meaning 1% of what they have done did cause your damages, only 1%, and they could be held 100% uh, liable for your damages. So, you know, it's not necessarily a positive or negative, but it is a factor uh, to look at when you've been injured on the job because it will dictate the route you take next. I can tell it would be helpful to have a lawyer like you involved in a case like this, especially <laughs> when you're not sure which uh, way your company goes here. So I know you've handled a lot of these cases. 
uh, in your view, when somebody comes to you with one of these and says, hey, I was hurt on the job, what should a person do? Well, that's a great question. And to, uh, to preface the question, kind of like doctors, you know, lawyers are specialized in their practices. You know, you have bankruptcy lawyers, you have a family lawyer, you have a criminal lawyer. And Herman and Herman has been around for uh, almost 30 years, and we primarily work with personal injury cases, on the job injuries, um, you know, car accidents, 18 wheeler accidents, uh, all sorts of injuries uh, that that you can experience. We, we've kind of ha handled them, um, and so the first question you would need to ask if you've been injured on the job is is whether or not your employer has workers' compensation coverage. And that, um, you know, they, they should tell you, your HR rep should tell you, um, but if they're being a little squirrely or if you can't find out quick, you usually can call Texas Department of Insurance um, and find out pretty quickly if they are subscribers. Um, and if they are subscribers uh, to workers' compensation, your avenues of recovery are fairly limited because of those protections given to the employer by Texas uh, and by the laws surrounding workers' compensation. So you would you would essentially go through a, a series of doctors all under the workers' compensation umbrella, get treatment as, as needed. Uh, and if you are unable to work, you would receive uh, coverage for your lost wages all through workers' compensation. If your employer is a non-subscriber, then they still might, like a Walmart or HEB, have those programs in place to cover you if you're hurt on the job with treatment, with lost wages and what have you. Um, but you, you have that extra possibility with a non-subscriber claim that if you feel that your employer was negligent in any way, 1% even, uh, then you have the possibility to... Uh, basically sue them. You can sue your employer for damages uh, just like you would in a negligence claim, a standard negligence claim. As long as you could have the duty of the employer that, that they breached that duty, uh, that their breach of that duty caused your damages, um, it, it's it's pretty, pretty cut and dry at that point. Um, and so those are kind of the couple options you would have um, if if you were injured on the job, but it always it always starts with you have to check the box whether or not they have workers' compensation first. Well, how is the process different from your perspective as a lawyer when you're handling a workers' comp claim versus a non-subscriber claim? So, you know, in our earlier, one of the earlier questions, I, I kind of discussed uh, specialties, how lawyers have different specialties, kind of like doctors, right? And so um, the simple kind of answer is Herman and Herman, we specialize in the non-subscriber claim and a potential third party claim, which is a, a third type of work injury claim that we'll discuss in a minute. Uh, but a non-subscriber claim, meaning as we talked about, if they do not subscribe to workers' compensation, you can sue the company for your damages. That's where a law firm like Herman and Herman comes into, into play. Um, if they do have workers' compensation and they do have the coverage, that's not something that our firm handles or helps with, but sometimes the workers' compensation program can let people down, and, and it really is the truth. Um, and so there are lawyers that help individuals that have worker compensation issues. So if you have workers' compensation, but you feel like they're rushing you back to work, or you feel like you're not getting the benefits you deserve or feel that you're entitled to, then there is another type of, of lawyer that can that can help with that type of case. So it really does, at least for our firm, it does boil down to the specifics and kind of that opening initial question of whether or not they have workers' compensation. And generally speaking, if they do, like I said, it's very rare that a, a law firm can help from a civil standpoint in the way of suing the employer. It's just, it's it's very limited because of the protections afforded to the employers. I understand. You wanna to touch on that third party claim you were talking about? Yes, so there is a scenario where 
a the employer for your potential client or your potential injured party has workers' compensation, but there is a third party that caused your injuries. And so in kind of an easy example to think about, if you're working for company A and company A is is a contractor, right? And there's another subcontractor that is, if you're, if you're painting the side of the building and the other subcontractor is meant to build the scaffolding for you to climb on and you're on the job, you, you built, you get on the scaffolding and it, and it collapses, you you have workers' compensation coverage. So your employer is safe, right? You can't go after them even if you wanted to, but that company that put up the scaffolding, that's a different company. That's a third party company. And so you can, in that scenario, sue the third party company for your injuries, for their negligence, and at the same time, collect your benefits through workers' compensation. So it's a bit of a, a double dip in a good way there uh, when you have that kind of a scenario. Again, a lot of pieces moving in every case. I know it depends. Another reason why it's good to call a lawyer and your firm like Herman and Herman to get some of these questions answered to make sure you're clear on this before you move forward. Yes, Leslie, you know, the call is always free and our firm, like a lot of firms that, that deal with these types of cases, there's no cost up front. There's no cost if we can't win the case. I mean, if we win the case, you're happy with the case, we get paid. That, that's how it goes. And it's a really good way. It's kind of a, a fail safe way for injured parties to come in and get help that they need because they don't have to pay us out of pocket like a criminal defense lawyer or uh, you know, a family lawyer where there's retainers and there's hourly costs. We are a contingency fee. So, you know, we take a case, we think we can win, we're pretty good at it. And when we win, everybody wins. It's, it's, a, it's a great scenario. Great to know. Will, thank you so much. Attorney Will Prevett from Herman and Herman in South Texas. Appreciate your time today. Yes, thank you, Leslie. Thanks for watching, everybody, this episode of Ask the Lawyers. Check out askthelawyers.com where you can choose a lawyer that lawyers choose.